this is a very interesting example of how to demonstrate standing waves in a very visual way. If we get a piece of, of um, iron pipe, and what we've done is we've cut 100 little holes all the way along with the top. Connect one end to a gas cylinder and a sealed cap. What happens is the gas fills the tube and the, the flames burn equally high all the way along the tube. At this end, we've connected a little diaphragm. The little diaphragm is just a balloon held on by an O-ring. And connected to, have a, to it, I have a speaker. And that speaker now I'm going to use to drive different frequencies along this tube. So let's switch on our function generator. And what you can see, I hope, is a, dem is a difference in the distribution of the gas along the tube. At a frequency, a fixed frequency, of, in this case, 350 hertz. I'm sending a wave down the tube that gets reflected and comes back. And at various positions, it sums together as an antinode. And at various positions, they cancel each other out at a node. These demonstrate maximum displacement of the wave, minimum displacement of the wave, maximum displacement of the wave. If I wanted to measure the wavelength of this wave, I could measure the distance between a node to an antinode to a node right down to another node. That's one full wavelength of the wave at 350 hertz. Using these two values, I can now calculate the velocity of sound, not in air, but in the, in the butane gas that occupies the cylinder. Let's look at the variation of frequency. If I now increase the frequency, the velocity is constant. What we should expect to happen is that the wavelength decreases as the velocity increases, as the frequency increases. Now what we see is the wavelengths are shorter. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven peaks in there. Last time I had six. And now at 450 hertz, the wavelength is the distance from here to here, or you can take it from antinode to antinode. Increasing the frequency further, we should see increase in the number of peaks. Just adjust the gas. Just go down, down. Yeah. There we go. You have to get exactly the right frequency in order to get a standing wave. And now you can see this time there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine peaks in, this, in the distance at a frequency of four, 542 hertz. So what you can do then, as you increase the frequency, you can show that the wavelength decreases. As I reduce the frequency, and we can hear that decrease in frequency. The wavelength is increasing. I need to just let it fill. The wavelength is increasing. Longer, longer wavelengths, down to five peaks. I just turned it off momentarily to let it fire. Four peaks, longer wavelengths, at a frequency of 320 hertz. Just adjust the gas down a little bit, Dave. See, three peaks. Getting down now towards the fundamental frequency. There's your two peaks. Dave's going to adjust so you can see the contrast a little bit better. And again, you can explain whether it starts on a closed tube as an antinode or as a node. And you can explain that if it's a maximum amplitude in the wave, that represents a maximum displacement of the wave, but a minimum in the pressure difference of the gas molecules at that point. So where we have the highest peak, it's maximum displacement, minimum pressure. And in each case, you can plot a table of the values of the velocity for the frequencies and the wavelengths, 
and you should find that the velocity of sound in this tube is constant. So this is a nice visual way to show standing waves of sound.